Alibaba, Alibaba is my father. Oh. Everybody say Alibaba. Alibaba. Oh, Alibaba. Ah, I'm all alone, boy. Jack. Daddy, son. I'm from New York. New York, to be precise. I'm hey. a New Yorker. I have no fear. Tony Abraham told me again and again and again. I made up my mind. I'm never going to appear in any movie that is not women and children friendly. Making a statement to the darkness she once battled, the void she once felt. I just feel I'm going to die for Like, I don't want to be close to them, like, so that if you die, they won't really miss And the future she has now embraced with excitement, just like the rest of her life as one of Nigeria's brightest stars, with millions of fans across her social media pages and tours across the world. She has dealt with scandal from one marriage and one relationship that ended very badly, with her partners launching into the public with attacks, accusations, and the shocking exposure of her private matters. For the first time, Tony reaches out of her shell to speak about the pain she has gone through and the greatest lessons her pain have taught her. Never met you, never seen, never been in the same room with you. But you know how they say it. I can be your biggest fan. Thank you. Know? you. As you've gone through a lot in the public eye. So before I even watch any of your films, I'd heard, you know, stories. So it wasn't that I watched the film. Until I watched the f So it's the weird thing. When I was watching the movie, I'm like, wait. She's so tired. This is literally me. Like, She's so like well, this. This doesn't make sense. I'm laughing in the cinema. I'm falling down on the floor. I'm standing <laughs> up. I'm calling people. I'm saying, "Is this how she's always has been?" They says, "Yes." Now I'm like, "How come I didn't know?" Because they say you've heard so much else that you didn't even know the talent. How has that been to go through so much in the public face and have to deal with it? You know, without anybody really helping you or guiding you or telling you how to manage this. Uh, it wasn't easy, but during the time when um, the crisis was much yes I had to get that was I think that was when I got a team right. so I was they helped me to manage it a little bit right. you know it was you know a lot of people do not even know that my my manager had to get me a counselor yes all right. the way from America to talk right. to me right. yes right. so it wasn't easy but we thank yeah. God yeah <laughs> so thank you for sharing that because I was just talking to Auntie Betty Rabon she was talking about meeting a therapist and all of that so did you know that you needed this or people or your, your manager told you and how did you respond to this? I know I needed it. You know, sometimes you, you need something but you just want to lie to yourself. You, I was living in denial. Mm. So I told them. Because mm. I, I know I was depressed. Then I was living in fear. Mm. You know, I would just sit down and be sad for nothing. Mm. Mm. You know, even when people are around me, I would be scared. Yeah. So, you know, especially when something good, when they call me for something good, I'll just be scared that yeah. something is going to come up, you know. I'm always very scared, you know. Then, you know, there was a time I just, I told to myself, I'm like, between you, if you die, you just, but, you know, I just, I said to you, don't do this, your mom, then a lot of people look up to you. Mm. A lot of people are going to be very sad, you know. Yeah. But it wasn't easy. Yeah. You know, sometimes I would just sit down and be scared. Yes. I'll just do like this, yes. I'll be scared. Sometimes I'll just sit, I'll just go. You know, I was not, I was not just happy. Yeah. And I was eating well, everything, but I was not, I was, I was, I was going thinner and thinner every day. You right. know? I was really very skinny. You know, it was, it was, I was living like, unf I don't know how to explain. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there are some things that you can really explain. Yeah. But when you see people that has happened to when I talk to them, so we both can relate, yes. you know, yeah. but I knew I was really living in fear. Yeah. So it was, then I, you know, I just called my manager at midnight. I said, I would just be crying. Yeah. I would just be emotional. Yes. You know, so I called him, I said, big time. I said, big time, I'm sad. And I was like crying. I was like, I said, no, I'm just sad, you know. Yeah. So you know, I said, okay, come to the, I just want to be alone, you know, I just want to lock myself. I will feel like some people are talking to me. I was really depressed. Yeah. How, so, because I'm assuming that this was in the 
at least in the past five years has this happened? Yes, um, yeah. three, four years. Yes. And so, so this is recent, yeah? And yeah. it's in the same time that your career has taken a lift. You have also crossed over. So you're not just uh, in the Yoruba industry. industry, you're yeah. now a mainstream English yeah. you know, actor. You have also begun to produce your films. Yes. And I think it is some kind of juju you are using because <laughs> each of the films is a hit, you know. Yes. Um, and, it, and so this is, you know, so this is your career is shooting up. But then at the same time as this is happening in your career, this is happening in your personal life. How, how, do, how do you manage that? How do you manage the success? This everybody thinks you're supposed to be happy because all of these are happening, but you are dealing with this. When I want to work, there's this strength. Mm. I have this strength. Then I have this thing with camera. I don't know. Yes. Once I see camera, everything about me opens up. Opens up. I do. I'm just something else. Yeah. But once the camera leaves, yeah. I become sad. Right. So right. most times, I always want to be at work. Mm. So I think that thing really helps me. Mm. It's not a good thing, but it, it helps me in a little way. Because I know that I will always be sad. So when I'm on set, I would act, I would want to impress myself yeah. very well. Yeah. Okay, so that when I get to the hotel yeah. or when I get to the house, yeah. I can just keep thinking about something else, but yeah. it still yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. Still, if I overcame it. So how have you, how did you overcome? How did you <sighs> tie it over? I started listening to music. Huh. I started listening to music. I spoke to my manager. I said, okay, you know what? I need you to always pick my call, like all the time. Mm. So he, he was, it was, he was really supportive mm. because he was always speaking my call, you know. And he's married, you know. So, mm. but the wife has to understand. Mm. I call him at the middle of the night to to be, because sometimes I just want to talk to someone. Yeah. So that really helped me. Then right. he got me um, a, a counselor. She came from America, yeah. so she calls me to tell me how beautiful I am, you know. So I now decide to change everybody around me mm. and I'll decide mm. to change some things about me too mm. okay what are the things that I'm doing that I think okay I have to stop most things okay so you have to this but this is part of mm. it you have to stop this mm. then I had to change everybody around me because I realized that they are not helping me yeah most times I realize that most times when something is wrong with me that's when they want to come I don't need pity party I need someone to make me feel yeah. strong you yeah. know so i had to change everybody around me yeah. i had to get new set of friends yeah. you know i started talking to i always talk to my manager yeah. then you know i my from there i started having different mentality you know mm. i started rolling with different people right. you know i had to my manager said okay so you have to start reading books more yeah. i read books i like yeah. reading books right. but not so he, he got me a lot of books, right. I started reading books, I would read my Bible, you know. Right. That was how I started getting over it. I started, right. and I realized that and I discovered myself. Self. So sometimes the thought might want to come, I would just say, you, yeah. go away from me, you yeah. know. Yeah. So that was how. Still to come. Yeah, I might be affecting you people, you people might, you might want to do good, but because I'm depressed, yeah. I'm not happy, I'm living, or not, I might just want to I want you people to be like me. Two questions from that. So it also it makes sense to me. And it looks like when you, as you after, when you went through this process. Yes. So all the things we might be seeing now, all the work that you've done in the past two years, because in the past two years you've really accelerated. Yes. It looks like this advance, this fire you went through, came out into all of this. You see, um, I think sometimes when, you, when we are depressed, we yeah. really do, when we're going through something or yeah. when we're being depressed, we really do not know what we're capable of doing. Yes. So, you, I think the, I had the fire in me. Yes. So maybe, you know, the fire was too much. That was yeah. how the, you know, depression was coming right. in, the fear was coming. Yeah. So immediately I could overcome it. Oh, yes. So that thing came out. Ah. So it was like two, um, two people trying to like two people fighting, fighting for who will yeah. oh, yes. yes so I was fighting for okay depression and fear yeah. of the unknown yeah. and the talent everything was there yeah. so but because of the people around me yeah. the depression was taking over yes. so when I changed when I got a team my yeah. manager helped me 
So I had to now, okay, this is what I want. Yeah. Okay, this is what you want. Okay, now I now chose this. Right. So that was why everything now came out. Out. So he's already, he was, he's in me. Yeah, yeah. So you understand. Yeah. So you redesigned, it's almost as if you redesigned your environment, you redesigned your life. I did. Yeah, you I found did. yourself and thought, what are the things that will help me be the best yes. version of myself? But I didn't change who you were. Yes, yes. I didn't change it. Yes. I'm still that playful person. Yes. I'm still that person that will mix English and Yoruba together. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, I'm yes. still me. Yeah. But you know, I just had to change, fine, I had to change some habits, yeah. but I had to change people around me. Yeah. I don't know, they, they might be bad for me, I might yeah. be bad for, for them. them. But okay, mm. let's just change. Mm. So go different ways, you go. Mm. And so even you take responsibility for your part of it, that look, maybe I was the one that was bad for you, I, but I'm just like, it's not, it's not a healthy environment, let's change it. I always take responsibility for my actions, right. in a way. Yeah. That's how I, I was brought up. Yeah. My brain, it doesn't make me any lesser, you know. Yeah. So I always take responsibility for my actions. Yes, I told them the truth. I might, I might be affecting you people. You people might, you might want to do good, but because I'm depressed, mm. I'm not happy, I'm living unknown, I might just want to, I want, maybe want you people to be like me. Mm. You understand? Mm. So, mm. so I asked, okay, everybody go. I might even be your bad luck and you might be my bad luck. Just yeah. go because I needed new people. Right. But when I met new people, everything about me changed. Change. I realized, okay, there are people you could talk to. Because you know, it's funny. It's funny that even when you talk to some people, mm -hmm. they will use it against you, future, yeah. which some of my friends did, yeah, you know. Yeah. So even when you confide in them, so I needed people that I could confide in, that I could talk yeah. to, yeah. that I could open up. And you know, when you're being depressed and you're living in un unknown fear, you need people you could talk to. Yes. Because once the person, once you, you're unable to trust the person, mm -hmm. or you tell the person something and mm -hmm. the person comes outside to say it out, you might not be able to talk to anybody again. Yes. You know, he actually, that was another thing that affected me. Huh. It was hard for me to trust people. Anybody. It was really, really hard for me to trust people. That's why like most people around me now, they're like families. Yeah, yeah. There's so many things I want to ask. Because this this makes gone. a lot of sense. <laughs> um, but first and foremost, you know, I think that you, I, and you know, this is fun boy me. I'm not even sure this is an interview question. But I think that, I was watching this film. What's that film where you were the, you, you were with Chris Atoll and you were his I mother. Her. I saw her. I watched I saw her a month ago. Yeah. And that was a completely different, different you. character. But you know, you carried it. You know, I thought, my God, she has range. You know, you disappeared into it and there was none of the comedic to you. There's none of the other characters. You disappeared. And we are just starting. Yeah. What? Yeah, you are just starting. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see the rest of it. <laughs> and you know, I thought to myself, she has range. And so now you're saying this, have this been, and so I'm looking at this person, who are we, who was I was joking with, I think, my colleague Viola, and I said, you know, sometimes I watch, if, I was, I watch there was a film I was watching, and I could have told him, I said, this film would have, this is literally what I said to him this morning, I said, that film would have been more interesting if there were more twin in the film, if she had mm. more screen time, because mm. what happens is I tweeted about your last, your new film, and I said, look, I watched this other film, Ghost and the Tout, and I suspended my brain because, and I worked in, and I loved it, and I laughed. And I said, because a film can have any mistakes, but if Tony shows up on the screen, <laughs> you forgive the film. Because that's honestly what I feel. Yes. So now that you're talking about self, that I want to ask, even your talent, have you doubted your talent before? And if yes, how? Why? I have never doubted right, my talent. Right, right. That's the one thing that no, you... No, I have never. Mm. But there's just... I was not just, I was not sure mm -hmm. of who, of what I have or who right. I am. Right. You right. understand? Right. You know, right. I know I'm talented yes. because I see people say it, right. they laugh, you right. can tell, right. you know, but I just, I didn't discover myself. Yeah. I was looking at something else, but I was something else. Right. I thought I was like this, but I didn't know. Right. So I think, let me just say, so my manager made me discover myself. That's right. So it wasn't your talent that was the problem, it was yourself discovering. It was me. When we return, Tony shares her resolution to inspire victims of depression. I think God just wants to use my life mm. to touch a lot of lives. Mm. I won't stand in front of you and tell you I want to talk to you about depression, about fear of your no. You will listen to me because you know my story. Yeah. Tell me about the depression. When you say depression, 
because I've gone through depression. You know, if you, Auntie Betty that I, and all the other guests have spoken to, Mary Waje, Maomi, we've spoken about this dark period. You know, but how was it for you? What is what is it like to be to be in this place? You know, I just I initially I thought, oh, I wanted to start a new life. Yeah. I just stood up. I said, okay. I decided I gave all my electronics out. Huh. Yes, I gave everything out. And I moved to the hotel. I was now living in the hotel. Huh. So if you if someone wants to come and I will tell the person to come and visit me. Right. When you come, we'll be in the same room. I'll go and pick up another room and be in another room and just stay there. You know, huh. sometimes all I just want to do is I just want to go and work, get the money. Yeah. So I wasn't even picking job, I just want to do everything. Right. So sometimes I just collect money, pay the hotel, do whatever I want to do. That was how I was living. And sometimes I would just stand up, I might just stand up middle of the night, just walk around. I was not scared of death. I was not scared of anything. Right. You know, <laughs> there was a time I was even, I was telling someone that, oh, it's possible, but I can swim. I can actually swim in tight toilet Milan, but yeah, it was that bad. You know, sometimes I'll be like, oh, I can actually jump, they will save me. I'll be like, okay, when I want to jump, I'll shout. So when I jump, people would come, they can save me. Right. Imagine, are they going to save me? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So but sometimes yeah. I'll sit like this, I'll just go like this. And when you're talking to me, I'll be like, yes. And when you come here, I'm... I'm Starting. And when you ask me what I'm thinking about, I'm not okay. thinking about yeah. anything. I'm just blank. Hmm. Yes. And you know, sometimes I'll just be scared. My heart will be beating so fast. I'll be so scared. Hmm. When they pay me money, I'll be scared. I'll be like, oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to... So, you know, I, I, there's so, I can't explain yeah. some. Yeah. I can't explain the feeling. I can't explain yeah. some. Yeah. Yeah. I see, it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. And what, what, what do you think is the main thing that the, the therapist helped? What's the, what, what, is, what, what were the things, or what's the one main thing that the therapist helped you with? that helped you conquer this fear? I think number one is willingness. Right. I was willing. Right. Then number two, they made me discover myself. Mm. They, they gave me reasons to want to live. Mm. They gave me examples. Mm. They asked me who I look up to. You know, they spoke to me about great actors, great actresses, mm. you know. So they, they keep talking to me. They were open to me. So I, I call them anytime. And my, my counselor and my manager, I call them right. anytime. Right. They were all working like back to back. Right. So they were there for me. So sometimes when I'm broke, my manager will just tell me. So I just say, I'm broke. I'm with you. Uh, I need like 40. Okay, I'll send 100K. There was money to spend. So they held you. You know? So they were. They were all over me. Huh. They made me discover myself. Huh. They, I had reasons. I was looking at a lot of people. They made me say, okay, look at this. Is she as talented as you are? Is this as talented? But look at where the person is. Huh. Imagine yourself. So now, now today, now, I would just see them like, ah, oh, why did this happen to me now? Because if I can achieve this in like a year, I'm sure I would have achieved more if you know, over the years. Yeah. You know, it was... Yeah. What about your family? Where was your family through all this? I, I don't know what happened. I just didn't want to see them. Because huh. I thought I, I, I was, I didn't want to get attached to them. Huh. You know, then I, then, you know, because I'm from a Christian home. Yes. Then I used to smoke cigarettes. Right. And they don't, obviously, never. So I'm always avoiding them. Right. So I didn't want to see them. Right. Then I just feel, I'm going to die soon. I, I, like, I didn't want to be close to them, like, yeah. so, so that if you die, they won't really miss you. Huh. Yes, it was that, but I would sit down and be telling myself, so if you die now, ah. There was a day I sat down and I was talking to myself, that ah, I think if you die now, you'll now be more popular. Hey, yes. Wow. I was looking at the crowd that would come, come. to my funeral. So you were plan looking, planning for it? I'm not joking, I was planning for it. You know, it was, and it, anytime, it, it's always very interesting, I'll be happy. Once I'm not thinking about that, I want to think about something positive, I'll just become sad. I'll feel like, oh, 
So if I make it now, they will kill you. There's always something, mm. you know, all the negative thought, negativity, the mm. depression, the fear mm. of the unknown. I can't, mm. you can't just really pick. Mm. You just feel there's someone out there looking at you. You are alone in the, I'm alone in the house. You feel that someone is recording you from up. He wants to go and sell you to the press. Someone is out there trying to record you. Someone is looking at you. You want to bath. Someone is trying to, you know, fear of the unknown. It's just, you know, there's some things about this thing that I can explain. Yeah. It's only, I can exactly. explain you. To have you. to be in it. You have to be in it yes. to understand. Yeah. After the break, with Chude continues. What does fearlessness mean to you now? Oh, how, does it, how does it manifest itself? Oh my God, I'm a dove. <laughs> I'm a white dove now. Yeah. And uh, my fear is gone, yeah. long gone. Yeah. Because right now, I talk to people right. about it. Right. So my fear is gone. There is nothing. I think yeah. all this thing that happened yes. would have happened later and it would have affected my career. Right. So these things that happened to yeah. me yeah. just happened and I'm sure that's the end. Yeah. It's just it. I think, okay, I have the face. Do you have the story? Yeah. I have the story. Yeah. I think God just wants to use my life mm. to touch a lot of lives. Mm. Because right now, I won't stand in front of you and tell you I want to talk to you about depression, about fear of the unknown, about falling and standing, about being strong. And you're going to tell me you're not going to listen to me. Mm -hmm. You will listen to me mm -hmm. because you know my story yeah. and you know my face. Yeah. So you will listen to me. Right. So yeah. I think that's just what... That's, that's, what how, that's how it manifests. Yes. So you know, so you've owned the story. Yes. And, and that is like, the reason why a lot yes. of people love me like, yes. oh, and she came out yes. later. I said, yes, because yes. I'm a diamond, I'm a gold rather. <laughs> you have to pass through the fire, fire to become that beautiful thing. What's the thing, the best advice you would give to a young woman who comes saying, ah, I found the love of my life. Like, you know, I'm just, I'm, I, it's, I found the perfect, like they always say, the <laughs> perfect man. What is they, the one thing you would tell her? One, one thing I will say, when it comes to the matter about the heart, yeah. which is love, yeah. You can't advise anybody. Ah, right. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. But as we grow older, mm. you realize that even the Bible says, husband, love your wife. Mm. Wife, honor the husband. Mm. You realize that most people that have successful wedding, mm. that has the sweetest wedding, mm. Is that the man was never in love with the woman when they got married or the woman was never in love? They were living together and they agreed to love each other. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So it's always like right. that. So it's a process. It's a process. Right. So when it comes to matter of the heart, mm -hmm. you cannot advise anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Just pray for them. You just pray for them. Just pray for them. And I want to, I want to ring my shakere for that. Because <laughs> you know, it's so important. What you said is so powerful. Nigerians, we are an advice giving machine. The way we advise. We'd like, yes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes. When you see, on, especially on, <laughs> on Instagram. Yes. When people are, you see somebody, they will tell you that, um, my boyfriend is beating me. Just leave. My yes. husband is beating me. Just leave yes. that marriage. Leave, yes. leave, leave, leave. Yes. Yes. Say, Why did you leave? Because you want to go and do prostitution. Yes. Why did you leave? Do you want to die there? All these things. Yeah. What the person needs most is love. The biggest problem, yeah. I'll tell you, I'd rather have a court yeah. than have psychological problem. Hmm. Yes. Preach. Because Preach. cuts, I'll treat a psychological yeah. problem yes. can make me have the biggest court I won't be able to treat. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, I knew this was going to be. <laughs> and I had to hold myself because, you know, I'm not joking. I am really a huge fan. I have to hold myself to because <laughs> now that you are my fan. <laughs> but I cannot play. This is a serious thing. We have to. Like, you're punishing me. <laughs> it's a I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm an actress now. I'm sorry. We'll do ah, the part two. We, we used to play. Yes, yes. We'll do the part but, two. But thank you so much. This has welcome. been a fantastic thank show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can call on me, my brother, when you need a help. We all need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you'll understand. We all need somebody to lean on. Oh.